saints, lift up holy hands. Lift high your voices and praise the sovereign one. For mighty is our God. And holy, holy, holy are his judgments. And he is all together lovely. Let us praise him, praise him, praise him.
Good afternoon, saints. I am going to read from you the 145th Psalm, Division of Psalm, starting at verse 3. 3, 4, 5, 18, 19, 20, 21. <laughs> All right. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty, and of thy wondrous works. 18. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth, hmm, my mouth shall speak the praises of the Lord, that all his flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come before you this evening. First of all, Lord, asking that you forgive us for everything that makes us feel guilty when we pray. We thank you, Lord, for this appointed time that you've allowed us to be able to assemble. We thank you, Lord, for just being a savior, for being a keeper, for being a sustainer, and for being our all in all. Lord, as we come before you this evening, Lord, we just come with a heart of gratitude. Uh, being amazed at what you have done for our church over the nine years that Pastor Vic has been a part of us, his wife by his side, and his family. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for sending him this way and for giving him a zeal to, first of all, love you with all his heart, to love his family, and to love this flock as his own. Lord, you have watched over him in a mighty way. You have seen him at the highs and you have seen him at his lows. And you have proven yourself to be a God that's able to sit there and sustain, to comfort and to guide. Lord, uh, as a lay person, I don't understand all the challenges and the weight that the ministry may have upon a servant like Pastor Vic and his family. But God, you know. And Lord, we know that you have ordained his life uh, to be at this particular appointed time. And for all of the saints of this church, Lord, we just say thank you. We, we, we say thank you, Lord, that um, he continues to build upon a legacy of pastors and preachers who have given of themselves uh, to sit there and shepherd this flock, to make sure that you are teaching and just he's preaching and, and just instructing us in the right way. And so for that, Lord, when we think around all the mess that's going on in our society, we are so grateful. And so, Lord, as we come today to be able to celebrate this moment and milestone uh, in his ministry, Lord, we ask that you would continue, Lord, to keep him beyond today. Lord, in the moments when he finds himself in a position where he's a little discouraged, we pray, Lord, that you would send him men and, and, and women along his side, Lord, to sit there and just kind of continue to give him a push to say, we love you, we appreciate your labor. But beyond law, Lord, when he finds himself making those decisions as only a pastor can make, Lord, we ask that you would continue to give him the wisdom that, we, that is talked about in Proverbs, Lord, that, that wisdom that passes all human understanding, and that, God, that you would just make him to feel comfortable and right with wherever the path is that you're directing. So, God, we just, again, thank you for this moment. We thank you for his family, and we just ask, Lord, that you would continue to be what we know you are, and that is a loving God a compassionate God, and a keeping God. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Good evening, church. I was honored to be asked to give the offertory appeal, and I had to do some research. I'm not going to lie. But <laughs> um, whenever I was looking through scripture, Deuteronomy 16, 17 says, Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he hath been given. And when I think about this, I know that some people, and there's times in my life that I've not been able to give money. But I hope and pray that God will always bless me with something to give to his people to help in his worship. And I just want us to think about that each day, that it's not only monetary, but every day that we walk, we should be giving in the name of the Lord. Now I will turn this over to my husband to give the prayer. We're doing tithes and offering first. See, I told you. I didn't know. <laughs> Okay, so at this time, we anyone that wasn't able to give this morning or that would like to give their tithes and offering, now is the time to do so. Thank you. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this wonderful day. We thank you because we have a loving pastor. We thank you because we have a loving home. We thank you because we have a loving church home. And we have wonderfully loving spouses. We thank you for our jobs. And while you don't ask that we give it all, we know that we owe it all to you. 
We thank you for this offering, Lord. And we ask that you would use it as you see fit for your kingdom, for your purpose. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The theme of this short message is based upon the question, what my pastor means to me. The best way of answering this question is to look to God's word, to learn what our pastor should mean to us. Perhaps this can be best answered by learning about what God's word says. Number one, what are the qualifications of a pastor or elder? And what expectations have been given to pastors elders or overseers. One, what are the qualifications for our pastor? This is found in 1 Timothy 3, 2 through 7. It states a bishop or an overseer then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, or perhaps sober-minded, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. I think it's fair to say Pastor Schiller has opened up his home to many of us here, and it's obvious Tuesday during Bible study and Sunday, his ability to teach us the word of God. Verse 3 goes on to say, someone who is not given to wine, not a striker or, or someone who's violent, not greedy for filthy lucre, was a King James way of saying someone who's not in it for the money, but patient, someone who's patient, not a brawler, not covetousness, or not covetous. God goes on to say, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. And why is it important for Pastor Scholler to rule his house well? Verse five tells us, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Verse 6 goes on to say, a bishop overseer cannot be a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. And verse 7 states, moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So it's important, as he does, that Pastor Scholler have a good reputation for those outside of the church. It's obvious from these few verses that a bishop, overseer, has to be a man of good character. Therefore, Pastor Scholler provides us with a biblical example of a man of good character and a biblically qualified overseer. Number two, what expectations have been given to elders to keep? Four quick points. One, to study God's word. First Timothy 5.17 states, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. Every Tuesday in Bible study and every Sunday, twice on Sunday often, we see his ability, we see evidence of him laboring in the word Amen. and laboring in the doctrine. Amen. Second one, to preach the word of God. First, and not only preach it, but do it when it's popular and when it's not popular. 1 Timothy 4, verse 2 says, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Thirdly, to pray for the sick. James 5, 14 says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. 
Tuesday, at least an evening service, and I'm sure also in, uh, uh, in noon service, in, in noon uh, Bible study. Uh, we pray for the sick on the list, and Pastor Shoulder joins us in doing so. And fourth, 1 Peter 5 states that an elder should be an example to the church. In summary, Pastor Shoulder provides a physical example of a godly man, a follower of Christ, and a biblically qualified elder who executes his role. 1 Peter 5, 2 through 4 states that elders are to feed the flock of, feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. In other words, they shouldn't be forced to do it. They should be willing to do it, which obviously Pastor Scholler is willing to feed the flock here at Main Street. Verse three and four goes on to say, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Thus, it is only a matter of time before our pastor's shoulder receives his crown from Jesus Christ. And what a magnificent crown it shall be. Thank you. preacher for this afternoon hour and glad to say he's the same one that was here this morning. <laughs> I'd like to start out by acknowledging his family on the side, Sister Millicent and, and the children. Amen. We thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Very good, very good. And I'd like to say that as I said earlier, meeting the brother for the first time and seeing his warm spirit and friendly spirit and, and his seriousness about the word of God and then hearing him preach the word of God. Yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's proofs in the pudding, isn't it? Yeah, proofs in the pudding. The brother's back this evening. We pray, ask that you pray for him as he comes again to preach the word to us. It's good to have a man that loves the Lord and preaches his word uncompromisingly so. Yes, so we thank God for him. So if you would, would you clap your hands and say, preach, brother, preach. Amen. Preach, brother, preach. Amen. Amen. And after the choir shall have sung, the next word, voice you hear would be Pastor Gordon Rowe. Amen. Amen. Oh! 
As I look, as I look back over my life, I can truly say, if you've had any engagement with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you, you certainly can look back over your life and say that you have a testimony. Once again, to, to our wonderful pastor, Sholar, to, to my brothers in the gospel ministry, and to the family of God, once again, good evening, Main Street. Allow me just a, a quick moment just to express on behalf of my bride and our children, just our, our, yeah. our gratitude. I preach better when she's in the building, so it's, it's good. <laughs> no, but, but allow me to just express, express my gratitude to you all. Your pastor could have anybody in this pulpit this, this day, but by his invitation, we are honored and counted a joy to be here. We counted a privilege. Amen. We thank you, Main Street, for your hospitality, for your love. And just for your expressions as we've walked through the door. It's beautiful to hear, welcome to Main Street. Amen. When we come in. So we just want to express that to you. Also allow me to say that, that we are encouraged. And it's a wonderful testimony of you, of your love for your pastor, his wife, their family. Just to see your expressions of love all day long towards them. It's an encouragement. And it's a joy and a wonderful testimony to you. So praise God for you today. If you got your Bibles this evening, I'm not going to be long, but I'm going to ask if you would join me in Hebrews chapter 13. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13. I guess I'm a bit of an agitator, <laughs> so I, I, I don't mind going to places that don't make us comfortable. I'd like to read into your hearing, we're going to just concentrate on the 17th verse. <laughs> Hebrews 13, 17, it reads, obey your leaders. And submit to them. Right. Say amen somebody. Amen. For they are keeping watch over your souls. As those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy. And not with groaning. Say amen again somebody. Amen. For that would be of no advantage to you. I want to talk this evening from the subject, mutual responsibility for mutual reward. Mutual responsibility for mutual reward. It'll be all right. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are an awesome God. Lord God, because of your grace and benevolence towards us, you have brought us into relationship with you through your son, Jesus. It is that reality and that hope that we hold on to. Father God, as we delve into your word, we ask for your help today. We speak out of your power and speak in clarity. Allow us to deliver from the urgency of your word. Help us to speak its truth. And yes, convict us, challenge us, lay us bare before your altar so that we might grow thereby. Watch over us, keep us. You be the main attraction today. It's in your name. And 
name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Mutual responsibility for mutual reward. There was a sister. She never got along with the pastor. They always seemed to butt heads. They, they never could, could, could get along. Just so happens one morning this sister and the pastor arrived on the parking lot at the same time. She got out of her car, he got out of his, he, he came to try to greet her, and, and as she was walking away, he said, uh, sister, I need to, to catch you really quick, let me, let me talk to you, walking away, agitated, she says, not now, pastor, I'm slated to give an announcement, I got to go put some things in order, but sister, as she, as, as she walked away, walked through the door. She went on into Sunday school, sat through Sunday school, and pastor came and sat out in the vestibule waiting for her to get out. As she came out of Sunday school, the pastor seen her. He said, sister, I, I, I need to talk to you. She said, not now, pastor. I've got to go in and give this announcement. He said, but wait, I, just, just, I need a quick moment of your time. Just got to tell you something. She said, uh, Pastor, not now. Uh. He said, well, here, at least take this note and please read it before service. Sister, a little bit more irritated now. So, Pastor, I'll read it when I get an opportunity. The sister goes into church. She takes her seat. She sits through worship. She gets up to give her announcement. She, she sits through the remainder of worship. She greets people at the, after the benediction. She goes to her car, and as she gets to her car, she sets her things in, in the passenger seat, and all of a sudden, she seen the note from the pastor fall out of her Bible. On the outside of the note, it read, please. Please read before service underlined twice under the words before. She smirked, feeling though she did her thing on at, in her time. She began to open the note. As she opened the note, she began to read and said, Dear sister, did not want to offend or insult you by making a big scene. But I would not be a loving and caring pastor if I did not tell you that your wig is slipping <laughs> and dangerously close to falling off. <laughs> Just trying to look out. P.S. I hope you read this before service. <laughs> All jokes aside, there is truth in this that points towards the idea that oftentimes our failure to take heed and submit to the instruction and care of the spiritual leaders that God has placed in our lives can oftentimes leave us at a grave disadvantage. In other words, spiritual leadership in our lives is not something we are called to run away from, but it is something we are called to lean into. This is what the Hebrew writers suggest here in our text. This amazing letter is being brought to a close. He, he frames his reader's understanding of their structural relationships of, and responsibilities within the church and among the people of God, ultimately for God's glory, but subsequently for their good. 
tells them, listen, if you want what is best for you in the way of the blessing of God, it is good for you to submit to those who have been placed in your life to be leaders and care for your soul. Maybe this is a little uncomfortable, a little too real this morning, but I heard y'all were the mature Christians. I'm going to stay in the book. A few things. He says here, by way of instruction, first thing he says is God's people have been given the responsibility of Submission in the church. He offers words that we, we regard oftentimes as four-letter words, as, as bad words within the context of our culture. He, he says right out there, straight with no chaser, obey and submit. I'm sorry, maybe I should say it a little softer. He says, obey your leaders. And submit yeah. to them. There, there's no way around it. He, he, he says, as the people of God, we are called to recognize, uh, appreciate, highly regard, uh, esteem, treasure, value, celebrate, respect, honor, take heed to, listen, follow, place confidence in those who have been given the responsibility for the care of our soul. The glaring implication and truth here is that spiritual people are called to take heed to and listen to spiritual leaders. This is not religion, this is righteousness. This is living according to the will of God. One may be wondering this evening, okay, how do I reconcile that? How do, how do, I, how do I apply that? How do I understand that? Let me try in my little few moments to, to try to help this morning. First thing. We got to make sense of this by recognizing that this is a command mandated by the word of God. The pastor, your pastor, all pastors are not God. We know that. Therefore, the pastor himself cannot give or demand this authority on his own. It is true, yes, he is just a man. He, he puts his pants on one leg at a time, just like you do. He works, he has bills, he has a family to take care of. He gets cut off in traffic and gets frustrated, just like you do. Yeah, he gets sick. Yeah, he has parent-teacher conferences. Yeah, he's got to deal with some things. Every human has to deal with. And so we often are tempted to dismissively demote him to having no authority in our lives or, or we, can, we can sit there and, and, and we can fixate on his humanity so much so that we limit the spiritual authority that he's supposed to have in our lives. So oftentimes we may accept good preaching, but keep spiritual direction at arm's length. I can come in here and hear you and be encouraged by you on Sunday, but, but, but take it any further, Doc, I'm not sure. Here's the thing. In order for us to get this right, we must conclude and, and consider and, and we must submit to the authority out of our understanding that the authority of the pastor is not derived from his own declaration, but God's ordination. 
This is God's doing, not man's doing. This authority is given out of the word of God. It says it right here very clearly. Because of this, our submission to leadership is ultimately submission to God, never man. As such, all these things make, although these things might make us uncomfortable, we don't grapple with this thing by contending with the man of God. We, we grapple with this thing by contending with the God of man. That's how we work through this thing. So if the question is why submit to him, the answer is ultimately because I'm submitting to God. I give him authority because God in his word has given him that authority. Secondly, you reconcile this understanding that if this is mandated by the word of God, it is also governed by the word of God. Because the pastor only has this authority based on the word of God, he is also challenged to live up to that very same word. He's not given the freedom to do what he pleases or speak what he wants. No, that would be an abuse of the authority of God that has been given to him. Literally, the goal of the pastor is to take care of the flock according to the word of God. Yeah. What does that look like? First Peter 5, 2 and 3, I believe it was read, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. We should have a deep appreciation for those leaders who are bound by a high view of scripture, who seek to give the whole counsel of God, who pray as they take each step towards the sacred desk to stand and teach authoritatively the word of God to God's people who grapple with and agonize with the truth of the sacred text, not only in proclamation, but in application within their own lives. That's why Paul can tell Timothy there that the elders who real well should be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. When you have a spiritual leader who is governed by the word of God, it should not be a problem to submit and, and, and follow that type of leader. You got a man of God, which I believe you do. I'm not talking about Main Street, though. But if you got a man of God that is laboring to point you to the word of God, instruct you out of the word of God, live up to the word of God, encourage and strengthen you through the word of God, equip and challenge you in the word of God, you shouldn't have a problem. Following. I don't mean to park in your driveway this morning, this evening. However, if you got this type of man of God and you're having trouble submitting and following his leadership, the problem is not him. The problem is you. Can I preach this bold here? Is that all right? Problem is, sometimes the people of God, we're good at judging the abilities of our pastors, but we're not good at, at evaluating the responsibility we have. All right. Our call, our role is to be submissive to the leaders God has placed, to have oversight and extend care to our souls. Mind us here. Secondly, the, the writer here, he helps us even further. By helping us to grapple with this all the more by reminding us of the pastor's sober responsibility. 
The writer continues, obey and submit. Why? For they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. When we contend with and fight against the idea of submission to our spiritual leaders, we are often missing the full picture. The argument that it's hard to submit must always be balanced out or brought back into focus with the insight and understanding of the sober responsibility held by your leader. Said another way, when we think about how difficult it is to obey and submit and how much we're not a fan of that idea, we must equally consider the flip side of this coin of how significant and solemn and sobering of a burden it is to care for our soul. What do I mean? Okay, let me see if I can help. My son, he's a little bit younger. He didn't really dig bedtime. He didn't like it too much. Go try to put him to sleep. And all of a sudden, he was hungry. All of a sudden, something hurt. All of a sudden, something was wrong. Finally, he'd, he'd, he'd be ready to go down. And sometimes he would look at me and he would tell me, he would say these things. He would say, Dad, it must be awesome being the dad. You don't have any bedtime. You get to stay up as late as you want. And I would sit there thinking, I'm like, son, I wish somebody would give me a bedtime. I'd shut this thing down right now. If somebody told me to go, I'd go willingly. The problem was, see, what my son was perceiving as a benefit was actually a burden. You see, brothers and sisters, what the Hebrew writer seeks to impress on the hearts and minds of the reader is that we must understand and frame obedience and submission to spiritual leaders not as a benefit for them, but a burden for them. This is why he says obey and submit, because they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. In other words, he is saying when you envision submitting to your pastors, don't envision them sitting on thrones. Instead, envision them sitting on watchtowers. He says, listen, when you, when you try to sit there and envision submitting to them, don't envision them standing on balconies of castles. Envision them standing guard at the gates of the city. That's how you have to perceive this thing. The good pastor cares for you, prays for you, visits you, takes notice when you're not in the house of prayer, cries with you, cries for you, stays up late and rises early on your behalf, spends hour in the word and prayer trying to give you a good word that he can feed to you. If there's no glamour, he's a guardian. Pastor lives in great sacrifice, ultimately to the glory of God, but also on your behalf. It's not only that they are caring for you and watching over your souls, but the pastor lives in light that they are accountable to God. Listen, pastors are going to have to give an account for how well they spiritually care for you. The more remarkable reality of that is that the people of God, you don't belong to the pastor, you belong to God. You ever watch somebody else's kids? You're a little bit more nervous? I mean, you love your kids, but but you, you, you want to make sure as you, you, you take them back that they're the same way they got dropped off to you at. 
I mean, you, you, you sit there and you're like, man, let me make sure I watch them just a little bit more carefully. I can take care of the bills of that one. But, but, but these, I, I, they belong to somebody else. They're precious cargo. They're valuable to somebody else. They're not mine. Incredibly sobering and greater reality is that pastors have been trusted as overseers and caretakers of God's valuable and precious possession. You, his church, his bride, his children. As Paul gathers the Ephesian elders in Acts 20, he tells them this exhortation. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Oh, man. The value God places on his people is found in the sacrifice he made on their behalf. He, he, he gave help of himself. He, he gave his only son, allowed his blood to be shed. Why? To purchase his people. And now he's entrusted that to the pastor. The pastor must shudder every time they consider that reality. Don't hear this wrong today. This is not a complaint. I hope that's not what you're hearing from my spirit. It is an incredible joy, an incredible privilege to lead and, and to be in position and to have the, the opportunity to be used by God. But I don't want you to miss the fact that it is an incredibly sober responsibility. All right. Hebrew writer says the people of God are called to submit the responsibility to the leaders are sober. And in light of all this, he says, finally, because of all this, help your pastor serve you with joy. He says, he concludes, let them do this with joy and not with groaning. Why? For that would be of no advantage to you. Brothers and sisters, if you want a theological foundation for what you are doing today, this is it. You are expressing your love to him. Why? Because you want to encourage him and help him and his wife and his family to continue this sober responsibility with joy. Brothers and sisters, we are called to do everything that we can to help him lead well, help him serve, help him watch, and help him care for your souls with joy. Continue, family, to help him fight, to keep the discouraging darkness of Mondays away. Encourage him and help him to remain refreshed so he can continue standing guard. Protecting this flock with joy. When we care and tend to the joy of our leaders, the Hebrew writer says, listen, this is an advantage to us. He says, listen, when we don't do this, this is a disadvantage. It, 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 it's, it's not in our favor. It doesn't work out well. Family, I just want us to consider sometimes blessings are removed because we're not doing what the word of God prescribes. If you'd allow me just to offer a quick closing thought. No, I ain't got much more time, but I hope you didn't close your Bibles too quickly. If you run down to verses 20 and 21. Hebrew writer there writes this amazing benediction. He says, now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Sorry, sound people. By the blood of, e of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do. His will working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. To him whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Let me, let me just give you this closing thought. Those who have been redeemed by God should know the blessing of having a good shepherd. In other words, the only way we can celebrate, the only way we can come to rejoice over, the only way we can praise God for good under shepherds is because we have been blessed to come to know the great shepherd. As the Hebrew writer brings this magnificent letter to a close, this letter filled with beautiful, majestic notes of theological power, his hand is moved by the Holy Spirit to bring to us a close with a dynamic word of benediction. It's a word that is meant to bless us and at the same time calls us to reflect in praise on not just what we know, but what we have because of who we know. He says here, just give me a few minutes. He says here, now may the God of peace. I don't know if you know him this morning, but I, I, I know that he is the God of peace. This echoes the prophetic words of Isaiah when he called our Savior that was coming, the Prince of Peace. Oh, the reality is here that, that Paul has written to the Corinthian church before that we serve the God of all comfort. When he says the God of peace, he is pointing to the reality that not only is he able to give us a little peace, he tells us that he is the source of peace. As we continue, we are indirectly given insight into the medium, the channel by which we find access and intimate knowledge of this peace from God. Because the writer continues by saying, it is this God who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant. Don't miss this here. Jesus is not our great shepherd by accident. He is our great shepherd because of his great sacrifice. Oh, if you wonder why is he the great shepherd, it is because he paid the price to be the great shepherd. Jesus declared for us his position and his qualifications. You remember it back in John 10, 11, when he said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. It is because of the victorious war that he waged against sin, death, and the grave that he has become our great and glorious and gracious watchman and protector of our souls. He is what the Hebrew writer calls the author and the finisher of our faith, our once and for all sacrifice, our great high priest. He is our Sabbath rest. He is our empathetic savior. He is higher than the angels, better than Moses, the point of all the prophets, and our great and glorious hope. He is the great shepherd. He is the great shepherd. So what is this writer's prayerful and blessed hope? Here it is in verse 21. His prayer is that our amazing God of peace through the transformative, redemptive work of our great shepherd would do what? Would equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. If I were to wrap this with a bow, we'll get our little family together and get on down the road. Let me just give this one to you. He says, amazingly, when we read this back towards these sobering responsibilities, both of pastors and people, both of pulpit and pew, we understand the command of God being the will of God and that what it looks like to do that which is pleasing in his sight, we learn that in order to do it, we must be equipped with all and everything that he has to offer that is good so that we can do his will. Here's the good news, though. In Jesus, you got everything you need need to do what is right. You just got to submit to him so that you can. Yeah. Family, this is my prayer for you. Let it be your prayer for me. Let it be your prayer for your pastor that our great, glorious, and gracious God, the one who has covered, cleansed us, saved us, redeemed us, 
will continually with his peace equip us to do his will and be pleasing in his sight. God bless you, Main Street. God bless you. God bless you, man. God bless you, man. God bless you, man. Appreciate you. God bless you, baby. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. God bless you. Follow our program. Thank you, Father. You notice that it says special love offering. We're going to ask the ushers to serve us a special love offering given to a special person. Amen. Amen. This is an opportunity for everybody in the house.
to participate. Amen. Give to our pastor. Amen. As yeah. God has touched your heart to give. Yes. Yes. And we pray that what we give is a blessing to him. Amen. Amen. So the ushers are going to serve us and let us <coughs> give our special love gift. And also notice that following that, we're going to have an opportunity for the auxiliaries to come and make presentations so you can ready yourself so that after we give the offering, an opportunity for the auxiliaries to make presentations. Amen? Amen. We do this every year, right? We know, we know what we're doing, so it's nothing new. So uh, let us give it to the Lord. Mm. What do you guys say on TV? Let's do this expeditiously. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Y'all want to just pass the trays up? Okay. Joshua, if you could come up. We hear um, from the Padion Ministry just to say that we love you, we thank God for you, and we're glad that God sent you and your family this way. And we just have a little something for you. 
for you. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> yeah, if it's for you, for you only, you can share with your brothers if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Josiah and Jeremiah, please come forward. Uh, <laughs> Amen. That's nice. That's nice. Um, this is from the youth. We um, we brought we brought you guys something, <laughs> and we just wanted to say thank you. Amen. Very good. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Nice to be nice. Pastor Sholar. The Missionary Society wants, wants to let you know that we love you, we appreciate you, we love that you sent us the word, we love yes. that you, you love us, and we appreciate you for your family and all that you do for us. Yes. And God bless you, church. We love you. On behalf of the choir okay, and first lady and children, this is just a small token, just small because, because what you mean to us, what you've taught us yes, yes. through God's word, yes. it means so much. And we thank you. We thank God for sending you Amen. here to us. Amen. And Miss Sholar, as a woman of grace, uh, I just thank you for your love and just for your teaching through women, discipling women, and just through your example of what a godly woman should be. Amen. I thank you both for just blessing my life and for all the members of Main Street and from the choir. We love you. Amen. 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 Pastor Scholler, this is from the Senior Adult Society. On behalf of the Senior Adult Society, we just want to say happy anniversary. We love you. We appreciate you. Sister Scholler, we love you. Thank you for teaching and preaching the word to yes. us. Yes. Thanks for everything that you do. We love you. Amen. Happy anniversary. Amen. Pastor Sholar, we just, uh, the Mennonox Missionary Circle wants to let you know that we love you for your labor of love and for always preaching the word. And we thank you for living the word and thank Amen. you for your lovely wife as well. Amen. We love you. Pastor, this is from the, the men's ministry. We just want to say thank you and wish you uh, congratulations on your ninth year anniversary. And we just thank you for, thank God for sending a man Amen. here after his own heart. And you're definitely after the, God, the heart of God. And we just thank you for all your teaching, your leadership, because you lead by example. And we just thank you and just want to bless you with a love gift from the men's ministry. And we just say thank you. want to acknowledge First Lady and we just thank you also for for all the wonderful things you do for our pastor and yes. uh, just shepherd yes. alongside of him for, yes. through, every, through, through every occasion and we just want to show you just a little bit of love from the men's ministry and we just say thank you. Even the church. Amen. Before I make my uh, love gift to Pastor Scholler, I'd just like to say that unlike the ladies who, you know, parted up and down the Mississippi River on a dinner boat, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yesterday we had a very good uh, fellowship and dinner with Pastor Scholler at Sedona, 
And, and I might add to that, what happened at Sedona, I hope stays there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, it gives me great pleasure and privilege on behalf of the Men's Usher Board to present you with this love gift and our appreciation of your dedication and exemplary teaching and preaching of God's Word. Thank you. Jealousy is such an ugly thing. I, I don't know why the men are so jealous of us women, but anyway. Pastor, I'd like to present this love offering from the Women's Usher Board to you. I want to thank you for all that you do for us. You're a loving, kind pastor. You stand with us when we don't stand and we can't stand. You're with us. I want to also say that I'm the only visitor that loves you as much as you will ever be loved. <laughs> Pastor Pastor, love you, brother. And we so appreciate your ministry, your yes. leadership, your loving us, Lord and just guiding us, Lord, following Jesus yes. so we can follow you. Yes. Lord, as on behalf of the deacon, board, deacon body, I want to present you with this little token right here, Lord. Well, and, and, and we love you. Amen. To Pastor Shola. <laughs> this is from the uh, men's ministry. And of course, you know the men love you. Amen. We like for you to dress nice. Well, and we saw how well you dressed in Tennessee. <laughs> so, so we decided that we were going to go out and buy you your own robe. <laughs> And uh, we also have a uh, gift card for you, but Les Moore is not here, so he had the money in his pocket, so we'll get it to you later. <laughs> All right. So I have, I think, the task with the last gift here as well. So, uh, so first of all, I want to uh, present some flowers to Lady Sholar, yes. our first lady. Yes. Um, and I think it goes without saying that, you know, you have been a great first lady uh, here at this house. You've continued to love God's people, to pour into the lives as we've heard this morning, and it could go on and on and on. But you know, I hope you know that you are so loved uh, by this house, and we appreciate all the labor that you do, but also how you stand, you support um, uh, your husband, our pastor. So on behalf of our church, I present you with these. If, if I could have everyone stand, because everyone's a part of this particular gift, uh, and Pastor, have you come up, in, in, is come up front as well, um, we would just like to, on behalf of our entire church, um, say, say thank you. And I think Nina said it best. You, you give so much. And when you think about the charge that you have in terms of making sure that you preach, you teach, you encourage, and you have responsibility for the souls of individuals that you see standing, uh, and I know you don't take this task lightly, but it's on behalf of your church, we love you, we love and we appreciate your labor. Amen. And as one of my mom's friends used to sit there and say, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, <laughs> all right. book of Romans would say to us that we ought to give honor to whom honor is due and tribute to
to whom tribute is due. Yes. This my pastor yes. certainly fulfills all of those qualifications. Yes. On behalf of Elder C. and Minister Johnson and myself, we're here to express appreciation to you for how you have encouraged us you have blessed us in oh so many ways, showing us things that we ought to know in God's word, and we have grown, and we know and believe that you are truly a God-called and sent man. So thank you, and I said at one of the other appreciations, Lord, give him a hundred more years. <laughs> And I'll say that again. God bless you. <laughs> you too. Give an honor to God, to my Main Street family, and to my pastor, First Lady. We thank God for you. And on behalf of New Horizon Baptist Church, we want to make this presentation to you. Amen. Good evening, Main Street. Good evening. On behalf of my wife and I and Greater Salem and I've literally our families to you, from us to you, we give you all this little token of appreciation, this little small bit. Maybe buy your wife a cheeseburger or two. <laughs> <laughs> buy your kids some fries. But again, <laughs> we are so grateful. Thank you, Thank you for your friendship. Uh, words can't adequately express the love we have for you all. Amen. and what you all meant to our lives, uh, not just pastorally, but also personally. Amen. We love you, brother. Thank you. Amen. 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 All right. Big bang. We thank God for all the presentations and gifts. And we can't say thank you enough. Can't say thank you enough. We love you, brother. We love you, Pastor. Amen. Love you, sister. Yes, we appreciate Amen. You. We love you. We always say, man's got to have a better half. <laughs> got a sweet better half. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I right, just clean your throat. <laughs> <laughs> you do too, brother. You got a good brother. <laughs> Let us bow. <laughs> our Father and our God, Lord, you are so great. We give, we give thanks to our pastor as we give thanks to you for sending him here. All things come of thee, O oh Lord. We're so thankful that what love we have to share 
comes from you because you are love. Master, you, you bless us in so many ways. You've kept us all the days. And here we are, Lord, at a nine-year point. Woo we, Lord. It went so fast, it seemed like he just got here. In one way, then another way, we know that's not true. Because we've seen him toil for nine years. We've seen you bless him for nine years. But it just moves so swiftly. So, Lord, we say thank you. We know that every blessing that comes our way, that you are the origin of it. Even when things are, are cloaked and looks like it's trouble, those are just experiences, Lord, you're allowing us to get through, to put it in our witness bag, that we can tell somebody about God who provides for us. We say thank you. So now, Lord, I pray that what has been done today has in some small way blessed his heart, Lord. Have it, Lord, in, in the way, only way that you can do it, like nobody else can do it. He and Sister Shola and, and, and the boys have them to know that they are loved by you, yes, but also by us. Make it real, Lord. Make it real to them that they feel it down in their bones. Bless them, Lord. Keep them, we pray. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And for his sake, we ask it all. Amen. amen. And amen. 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 So now, saints, we going to ask you to stand as we present the pastor. Main Street Baptist Church. Amen. Thank you all for your kindness and your love towards myself and my wife and my, my sons for these nine years. And I want to go according to the program. I think my wife has some remarks. I'll have her come and I'll follow behind. But I, I do want to just say thank you. Uh, this has been a wonderful uh, nine years here at Main Street. First of all, I'd like to thank the Lord. In Psalm 34, verse 1, one of my favorite chapters, Psalm 34, but verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. But this poor woman cried out to the Lord. And he heard my voice and delivered me out of all my fears. Verse 8 says, for I have tasted and I have seen that God is good. And I've been blessed because I've taken refuge 
and I've trusted in my God and my Savior. I am so overwhelmed by your mercy, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. And not only saving me, Lord God, but you prepared me before the foundations of the world to be honored to stand by the man that you have proclaimed to be the under shepherd of this local assembly. And I am honored. I am humbled, Lord. I thank you that you saw fit in your infinite wisdom to choose me to walk side by side by your man, to serve him and to honor him and to love him as nobody else can do. I'm just saying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> You are a mighty good God, and I bless your name. You saw me when I was wallowing in my filth, in my despair, in the darkness of my soul, my depravity, and you said, live. You gave me life, and I want to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and that would have been enough. But today I stand here as the wife of the under shepherd of this church. And I want to bless you, Lord. I want to thank you. It's all because of you, Lord Jesus. I want to give you honor and give you praise and give you thanks. You are worthy, for without you, I am nothing, Lord. You know it already, but I just want to declare for everybody that's here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by your goodness and how you've allowed people to love on us. Lord, thank you, Lord, for providing for us and for keeping us and for encouraging our hearts, Lord. I want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to also thank the chairpersons for this year. Deacon Leonard Breadwood and my sister, Melinda Breadwood. Yes, indeed, the women had a fantastic time on the cruise. And we don't apologize for it. <laughs> thank you, Sister Melinda for blessing us. We had a fantastic time. Our heart was so encouraged by seeing the women rejoicing together and enjoying themselves and having a good old time in the Lord. Thank you, Sister Melinda, for that. Thank you so much, Deacon Breadwood, for blessing my husband by gathering all the men together last night. I wept for joy when I heard how the men blessed my husband. We are one. So when he is loved on and blessed, I feel it in my gut. And I want to say thank you for blessing my husband. Blessing my husband. Thank you. All the men who came out yesterday, thank you. You don't know how you blessed my heart by encouraging my husband's heart. Thank you. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for pouring out your love on my husband. Your pastor, but my husband. Thank you. I want to thank the Bride of Christ at Main Street Baptist Church. Thank you for loving on Pastor Sholar, myself, and my children. Thank you for your prayers, for your kind words, for your gifts, for your hugs, your smiles, your embraces. I want to say, I love you, Main Street. Yeah. I love you, Main Street. Thank you for after nine years, I came into this local assembly knowing that you all were godly people, that you would honor the office of the pastor. All right. All right. I knew you would honor the office of the pastor. But it's something else when I can say from the my bottom of my heart, I know that you love the pastor and his family. 
That means a lot. And I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you, Main Street Baptist Church, for being my family, for praying on behalf of my children, for praying on behalf of my husband, and for praying for me that I would not dishonor the Lord by failing this man that he's placed in this office. Thank you. Amen. To the mothers of the church, I want to say thank you for being an example and for loving us. Thank you so much. I want to say to Sister Ward, I want to say thank you for being a godly example for me to follow. Thank you for loving me and being so gracious, a woman of class. A woman of class, and I want to say I love you, I thank God for you, and I thank you for loving me. I want to thank Pastor Hackett and my dear Sissy for coming up and celebrating with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. So We love you. You already know. We love y'all. I'm just saying. Thank you all for loving us, supporting us, praying for us. I want to say thank you, Pastor Roe. You bless my soul. This morning coming from Romans chapter 8, that's my husband's favorite chapter. I'm just saying. But that bless, you walked us through the whole book, the whole council of the book of Romans. And I want to say thank you for your labor. Thank you so much for loving on your bride. Thank you for loving on your bride and those beautiful babies, and we're praying for you. Thank you for blessing and feeding our souls, focusing our heart and our minds on the, the, the great shepherd. Thank you for that. Thank you for your labor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Brown and, and Elder C and, and Minister uh, Kenneth. Thank you for laboring alongside my husband. Thank you that, that, that you help him bear the burden that God has placed upon him to bear. Thank you. God has gifted you all individually and uniquely. And, and just to see the cohesiveness how it's come together, I want to say bless the Lord for you all. Thank you for loving my husband and supporting him. Thank you for that. It blesses my soul. It blesses my soul. I want to say thank you to Jonathan, Josiah, Jeremiah, and, jo and Joshua. Yeah. Though my Jonathan's not here, I want to say to my three babies that are here. Yeah. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above, comes from the Father. You are my perfect, precious gift. Mm -hmm. all right now. God all gave right. you all to me and Daddy yeah. to shepherd your little hearts to pray for you, to love you, to support you. And before we are pastor and first lady, we are mama and daddy. We love you. You do not take second place to nobody. We love you. We're always here for you. We love you so much, and I'm so proud of you all. Josiah, I am so proud of you. And I love you. You my big baby. I just love you so much. My King Josiah. And my Jeremiah, my weeping prophet, I love you, Jeremiah. My little prankster, I love you, baby. Thank you. I'm the one to get your jokes. Even if nobody else gets your jokes at home, I get your jokes. I love you, baby. And to my baby boy, Joshua. Be strong and courageous, Joshua. I love you, baby. You a mama's boy, mama's baby. Whenever I go away, you the only one to call me and check on me. Mama, where you at? What you doing when you coming home? Thank you, baby. I love you so very much. And without further ado, I'm going to wrap it up. I just want to say to my husband, Twenty-seven years ago this month, the Lord saved you. Twenty-four years ago, he brought you to me. And I just want to say, nothing has changed. 
And when I stood before that altar before God, and I committed myself to love you, to serve you, to be your greatest cheerleader, to help you, to help you serve and honor the Lord, nothing has changed. As long as the Lord has me here, I know my calling. I'm not confused. I'm not confused at all. As I see God blessing your life, it brings me great joy. I adore you because you are my gift from God. God doesn't make mistakes. And God said he gives me the best gifts. The best gifts for my good and for his glory. And you are that gift. I recognize that. You are my gift. And I pray that the Lord would allow me to serve you, help you, counsel you, love you to the best of my ability. And you know I ain't playing about that. I'm so proud of you, Pastor Sholar. I've seen you at your weakest points. I've seen you when your heart has been broken. Lord Jesus. I've seen you when you've labored in prayer for those that you have a charge over in the flock. I've seen you seek to raise your sons while being the pastor of Main Street Baptist Church. I've seen you seek to love me as Christ loves the church while loving Christ's church. And I'm encouraged because you love the Lord God and it's genuine. It's genuine. You're not perfect. God is perfecting you. You've not been glorified, but God is sanctifying you. And I can testify. I can testify to your pursuit of holiness behind closed doors. And for that, I honor you. Yes, you get up there and God has gifted you to recall scriptures. You have taken us through, actually, I wrote them down. You've taken us through James, John, Jude, Job, Daniel, Ecclesiastes, Titus, Ephesians, Jonah, and my favorite book, Revelation. You've walked us through those books completely expositorily. You broke it down. You brought it to, to, to bear upon us. You, 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 you fed us God's word. And, 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 and I want to say thank you. God has gifted you. And like I said before, as long as you don't turn to the right nor to the left, God is for you. And no one will be able to stand against you. As I close, I think of that wonderful prayer in 2 Chronicles, I believe chapter 20, um, verse 12, where King Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, um, there was a great horde coming against him. The nations were coming against him. And, and, and they were mounting up a force to besiege uh, the, 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 the land of Judah and to kick uh, the people out of the land that God had given them. As I, as I look around and I see what's going on in our, in our parking lot, and, 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 I, and I see how you're standing behind the pulpit and you're, you're speaking and you're, you're, you're standing up against, as you went through the book of Jude, and you're standing up against apostates, those who are distorting, prostituting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, there's going to be spiritual attacks coming against you. But Jehovah, Jehoshaphat said this. He, 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 he was a little uncertain and a little afraid. And he said, Lord, this great multitude that's coming against us, we can't stand. We don't know what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. And in verse 15, and bless my heart, the Lord came through a prophet and said to Jehoshaphat, don't be dismayed and don't be afraid. The battle is not yours. It is the Lord. See the salvation of the Lord, sweetheart. The Lord is for you, and I got your back. Amen. Amen.
I know what it feels at a preaching conference when you have to come up after a preacher who just tore down the house. That's how I feel every year when my wife speaks, like, let me just do the benediction and let's just go home. Um, I, I, uh, I want to say that in light of the, the sermon that was preached tonight, that I, I love being the guard of this church. I, I love standing guard over you all soul. It, it is a privilege and an honor to, to pray for you, to, to teach the word of God. I, I get tired in the work, but never of the work. And uh, it is a joy to shepherd you all. It really is. Uh, I thank God I, that he would call me to this, this flock, this church, and to serve, uh, to pray, to preach the word, and, and to, to minister to you all. So Amen. I'm thankful after, after nine years I can say that. And it, it is a joy. And I thank the Lord for, for his grace in calling me uh, to this ministry. I thank the Lord. I really do, as my wife may mention, uh, that this is the 27th year the Lord saved me. So, so when, when Elder Ward was in his third year here in Main Street, six and a half hours away from here, in Jefferson City, Missouri, God saved me. Your, your 15th pastor was saved. And never would have thought uh, that God would take a, a, a sinful man in the world, save him, and on that same college campus, bless me to meet my bride, and then call me to the ministry. That he would take a sinner and say, I want you to be a pastor. It's just a grace. It's just a grace. It's just a grace. That's, that's nothing but that's nothing but God. I wasn't raised in church. This, this is nothing but God. This is a miracle you see up here. It ain't, ain't me. It, <laughs> Jesus said, I'm going to take you. I'm going to save you. I'm going to call you to shepherd my flock. And when I see my name on that door every week, I'm like, Lord, are you kidding? I, all I can do is boast in my weaknesses. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't come from a preaching pedigree. Wow. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't have a lot of things. All I have is the word and the Holy Spirit. And he says, just preach my word verse by verse and leave the results up to me. And that's, that's what I've been doing. That's all I've been doing. It ain't, it ain't I don't make the word alive. It's alive. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I just, I just, I don't build the church. Jesus builds the church. I don't save anybody. Jesus does the saving. I, I don't do the conviction. I don't do the growing. The spirit of God does all that. I'm just a voice. That's all I am. And so I, I know that I have to give that praise and that honor back to him. The fact that you all would love on me is, I know it's an act of God's favor. I know it's nothing but the Lord. It ain't nothing but the Lord. And I just want to say thank you for making these nine years enjoyable. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to my 10th year and, 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 and on and on and on. I pray God just gives me the grace to continue to endure and to serve you all faithfully till he takes me home. I, I want to thank, thank you. I want to thank my wife for, for her love and support and partnership and, and, and how she, uh, you know, she, she, she expects me to live out what I preach. And I couldn't ask for a better helpmate, a better accountability partner than my bride. And, and how she helps me as a husband, helps me as a father, and helps me as a pastor. I thank the Lord for my sons, for Jonathan and Josiah, Jeremiah, and Joshua. I, uh, I know my son Jonathan, he texted me and told me he wished he was here. And I just thank the Lord for him and what the Lord's doing in his life. And thank the Lord for uh, the seasons that God just takes us through even as he sanctifies me personally, even as a parent, and to see the power of God, how he strips you of all pride and thinking you can raise your kids and you can get them where they need to be. And God says, listen, this is much you need me as a pastor. You need me as a father. And God just shows that. And I thank the Lord for Josiah. And he's growing and working and graduating soon. And I'm just blown away by that. Jo Jeremiah's in high school now. And they were little guys when we came here, you know, and and. <laughs> And now, you know, uh, they're, they're grown up, and, and they're growing up before us. And, 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 and then, you know, Joshua now, you know, he, this year he didn't even want me walking to the bus stop no more. I'm, 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 I'm breaking down. I'm like, you sure you don't want me? No, nah, Dad, I got it. I'm like, son, you know, it's a ministry to me. 
You know, like, nah, I don't need, you know, I just don't need you hugging on me. I'll say I love you here. <laughs> My friend's up here at the corner. Just let me be. And so uh, I'm like, man, so it's quite an adjustment that's happening in our lives in the show, our home. And I thank God for every moment. Thank God for every moment. I thank again the church. I thank the Lord for L to see uh, just being uh, such a help to me, a, an encouragement, uh, just an accountability to me, uh, just um, support. I thank the Lord for L to see. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Thank the Lord for Pastor Bob and his love and support and encouragement. And um, thank the Lord. It's a blessing to serve amongst men who love Jesus. I'm serious about the Lord. And I thank the Lord for Minister Johnson and his bride and his little man Noah. You know, I just thank the Lord uh, for them. They're, they're sweet to the Stroller family. And thank the Lord for his growth and development in the word. And I just pray God would... Take them beyond me. I just pray God would just bless them. I love them. And uh, love the deacon body. I, I love the deacon body. I love uh, just uh, their patience with me, and I love the fact that we can meet and fellowship. I, I love their support and encouragement and love. Uh, I love them for that. Love Sister Flo uh, for her service. Again, uh, I, I know uh, in this past church hours, she's still serving Main Street and still being gracious to me as I'm sending in as would be considered in college late homework. Um, <laughs> and she just, you know, she's just so gracious. And Sister Beverly as well, you know, and uh, she teases me, stays on me. And I thank the Lord for our, our friendship and Sister Kendra Lynham. I thank the Lord for Sister Kendra Lynham and David Sebastian, who messes with me every time Tennessee wins, and uh, I just love love him and love Brother Bonds and how he serves here at the church. It's just a joy when you come to this building every day and see saints working, and, and they, they love this church, and it's a joy uh, to do that and uh, to, to serve alongside. I want to say how much, I, as I close, I thank the Lord for Pastor Keith Hackett and, and Sister Tanisha Hackett and... Uh, as we came here from California, it was always, you know, what, what, what are our friendships? You know, who do you allow to be in your inner circle? You know, we live in a glass bowl, and, and there are certain things you just know not everybody needs to know. And, and, and who, who can you trust? You know, who, who can you trust? You get burned a couple of times. And you think people that love you and, and everything, and you find out they, they say stuff. They'll say stuff, put it on social media. They won't even love you enough to come to you. And you wonder, who do you trust? And I just want to say that uh, Pastor Hackett and Sister Tanisha have been faithful, trustworthy. Uh, just like Elder C. Pastor Bob, Minister Johnson, they on the phone. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? I'm like, you know, what, what is there to talk about that long? I mean... And they keep going and going. Then they get away on top of that. They're like, okay, well, they'll talk eight hours and say, I'll see you on Friday. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> so anyway, so I thank the Lord for their friendship. I thank the Lord for, we, we've been on vacation together, and I just thank the Lord for them. Um, I thank the Lord for Pastor Gordon Rowe and his bride and his, his family coming and sharing this day. I, I, <clears throat> I, I can say this. I've talked to Ed Ross, and... Um, I did have a, a brother slated to preach on this day, and uh, gifted brother, and and uh, discovered that the brother just wasn't willing to live to a standard, as was read by 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 brother Bernard, or what it means to be a pastor. Just didn't care about his public life and how it was a stumbling block to the church. When I called him and talked to him, he said, "Well, just just tell your church just to." to unfriend me. I, I'm going to keep doing what I'm going to do. And I said, brother, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to disinvite you. I can't put you before the church. And, 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 and the Lord, the time I've had, the small little time I've had with Pastor Rowe and what I've heard from, 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 from Ed Ross and, and even Terrence and, and Leslie 
uh, gay are here from his church. You know, it's just a testament of what you know that this man's and his family are committed to the gospel. And that's all I want to present before you all. Uh, there are preachers that can preach. There are a dime a dozen. Not many of them live out what they preach. And I, and I, and I have a responsibility to who stands behind this pulpit that they live out what they preach. They may not have certain oratorical skills, but if they are God, like, like I believe it was uh, uh, Robert Murray Machine, it says, not great talents that Jesus blessed, but likeness to Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's what matters, yeah. where they like Jesus Christ. And I just want to say, Pastor Rowe, thank you for coming. I know that you have to get on the road and get back home, but you would sacrifice you and your bride and your family to come and spend this day with me. It means a lot. Amen. And I thank you for it. So I say to Main Street that uh, I love you. I love standing. I love to, to, to spend and be spent for the gospel here at Main Street Baptist Church. I love you, and God bless you. First of all, I honor the Lord first for saving me. I thank the Lord for bringing me to Main Street because everything that I know about the gospel, it was here. I was saved under the ministry, of, under the word of God from Elder Ward. And I've been blessed all the more, even more, along with under the pastorship of Pastor Sholar. And I thank God. So Pastor Sholar, we thank God for you. We thank God for you being a serious pastor who's concerned with the well-being of our souls, one who is not swayed by popularity or fanfare. Instead, you've been consistent in delivering the word of God, and I thank you for that. This has indeed been a wonderful day of worship. Amen. The gospel has gone forth twice boldly, and we thank you, Pastor Rowe. <clears throat> I pray that your hearts have been encouraged and that you all have been reminded and you experience the love and appreciation that we have for you. I would like to ask Josiah, Jeremiah, and Joshua to stand and in the absence of Jonathan who could not be here. You know, boys, you all have been here now for nine years and we want you to know that you're not just the pastor's kids. You are our kids. You are our Main Street babies. We love you, and we appreciate your kindness and your good behavior, which is a reflection of how you've been raised at home. So know that you are Main Street baby. You guys have been here for nine years, and we've watched you grow, and we thank the Lord for you. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. You. To all the saints of Main Street that has been involved in helping us with the program from the... Um, boat ride to the fellowship we had on yesterday to all of the decorations the ice cream socials before everything we just want to say thank you thank you thank you i always say i wish i could have a video to give to the pastors so that you could see the actual response that is given whenever it is that we ask people to do something that your hearts might be blessed so to Main Street, thank you all again so much for your labor and the precious time that you gave to bless the hearts of our pastor and his family. Amen. Saints, now the pastor anniversary day is over. The bell of Louisville is carrying other passengers. <laughs> the decorations will come down. The event announcements will no longer be in the bulletin. And you'll even put away your silver, black, and fuchsia outfits. But saints, I encourage you that we do what Pastor Sholar charged Mount Zion to do last week as he did the investor to services for Elder Watson. And this is what he charged them with. 
he said to be sure. Pray for your pastor and his family on a daily basis. He said to be patient with the pastor. And he said to participate in the ministry, in the work of the Lord alongside the pastor. So I encouraged us that as the pastor anniversary season has gone, but let us continue to pray and keep our pastor in our forefront. Again, we love you and we thank God for you. So let's go downstairs and get some ice cream and um, there will be a receiving line so you all can individually say again how much you love and thank God for your pastor. Be blessed. Just like my beautiful wife has just mentioned, it's been a glorious day. We thank you, Pastor Gordon, for preaching the word of God to us and sharing, sharing that. Main Street, we are blessed to have a man of God to preach and teach the word here at Main Street for nine years. We thank you, Pastor. We thank the Lord for you. And also thank you for your family by your side. To be patient with us. To encourage us. To preach and teach the word to us. But more so to love us. As Christ has charged you to love his flock. Sometimes you may not see it directly. But you bless us. I saw in um, the men met last night. And I could see the impact of each brother who spoke. And how it impacted you. Not from our words but what the Lord had placed in us Amen. to say to you, to encourage you. Because men of Main Street, ladies of Main Street, children of Main Street, it's not about us. It's all about him. And whatever we go through, and whatever we face, we know we have a God that loves us. We have, he has sent an under shepherd to protect our souls. And that he holds us and loves us and, and encourages us in his word. And we're thankful for that. As my wife has said that it's not just a day but it's every day Amen. that the Lord shows his grace and mercy upon us. Amen. And we're not to take that for granted. Amen. Amen. We have our highs and we have our lows. Amen. But we know we have a God that keeps us in our highs and our lows. Yeah. Yeah. So we're thankful for that. Yeah. I'm thankful for my wife. Yeah. I, I think it's a, for the labor of love that she has put together for organizing this event. And I'm thankful that I was able to honor to help her in the little way that I could. But uh, we know we each have a, we each have a blessed service in, in, while we're here. And, and this is her calling. And she's blessed to do that. So I, I thank you for my beautiful bride and, and, and all that she's done. I'm thankful for that. Again, it's, 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 a, it's a day of rejoicing. It's a day just to say thank you that we love our pastor and we, we love our first lady and we, and we love the family. We just want to take this time to thank the Lord to encourage you for a little bit. And as we lift each other up through these experiences, whether it's on a boat ride where you all learn to two-step or, <laughs> or but just loving each other in the Lord or is in the men's retreat where what goes on the retreat stays at the retreat, right? or at a restaurant in Sedona, that we, in, in each of that, we, we know that we open and we close in honoring the Lord. Amen. And we have laughter and fun in that. Amen. 
So that I say thank you. Thank you, Main Street, for just being a loving family. Amen. And they continue on loving each other. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Happy day. What a day. I think it's time for the benediction, right? Amen. Good, I need some ice cream. Ice cream. All right. Yes. I heard an amen for the ice cream. Let us stand. <laughs> Beloved. Yes. And now, yes, may the grace of God. In the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh -huh. the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, All right. rest, rule, yes. and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. Yes. Let the church say, Let the church say, say. say.